are you guys tonight? You guys are live here on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook and Instagram page. My name is Brandy. I am with Brushed by Brandy, and I am a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador. Um, I get to paint with you guys live every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern, so we are live here right now. Um, and we're live coming from my house tonight. We're inside my house. Usually I have a workshop that I paint in. Um, but it is 110 degrees in California today. And so I looked at my workshop and I laughed at it and I walked away. Um, and we're also, <laughs> we also have the threat of power outages tonight because there's going to be so much power usage for cooling homes and stuff. And, um, so I didn't want to add to that by trying to cool my workspace at the same time. So we, I'm bringing the show inside the house. We are in my breakfast nook right now. Sorry. Sean's adjusting the cameras. He's out of his element right now. He doesn't know what to do. Uh, you guys, my husband Sean is here behind the camera to help us answer any questions. So pop on as we go and um, he'll help, help answer those for us. Um, tonight we're going to be working on a patina paint project. So let me show you what I've got. Um, I actually have this set of metal stars and I posted a picture of these on my page earlier. These are done with iron patina paint, okay? These started out in this ugly red color. Let me see if I can show it to you guys. So this is what they, they kind of had this red finish on it. You can still see little bits of it on the underside. They were super ugly. So I did these a couple years ago, gosh, probably three or four years ago. And I use them sometimes for staging and I love them. They're just really rustic and cool. And um, I love what the patina paint did to them. This is iron patina paint with green spray. And we're going to talk about what that means as we go. But I'm going to put these aside because we're not going to do iron tonight. Tonight we're actually going to work with copper. Let me show you guys what I'm starting with tonight. So I have a second set of these stars. Because I used to have a set that was hanging in my son's room. And when we moved, I took them down and I never put them back up. But I want to do these only I want to do this set in copper. So I'll have a copper and an iron set that I could use together. Um, this is my original finish on these and it's kind of ugly. I pulled it out and was like, what was I ever thinking? This is kind of ugly. I'm going to turn them to copper patina. So if you guys think about what copper patina looks like, when you leave copper out to naturally weather, it turns to those beautiful green shades of copper verdigris. That's what I'm going to turn these into. So it's going to go from this to beautiful shades of copper. Okay. So let's go to get started on these. Um, the first thing you want to assess when you're painting um, with patina paint is what is your surface. If you are painting on any kind of metal, and these are metal, you need to use what's called Prime Start. This is Prime Start. It's part of the patina line from Dixie Belle Paint. And I'm using Prime Start because it's going to create a barrier in between my patina paint and my metal so that that, um, that patina does not carry through onto the metal. Patina is corrosive. So if I were to leave this unsealed with the um, Prime Start, eventually it would start degrading this metal. It might take several years to do so, but it's naturally corrosive to metal. It would eventually kind of eat through this metal. So the first thing I want to do for these is I need to create that barrier. Um, now, I like a little bit of texture with patina paint. It's meant to be kind of a rough and rustic look. So I'm just going to use an expensive chip brushes for this. So I get that brush stroke texture. Whenever you're using chip brushes, it's very normal that you'll lose some brush hairs and these are uh, brand new. So I should have washed these before, but I didn't want them to be wet. So um, just make sure that you go through and try to pull out any of those loose hairs. These are just inexpensive disposable brushes. You're going to lose hairs on them. And then I'm going to use my Prime Start. This goes on just like a paint, you guys. Let me show you what it looks like. It's the color of Dixie Belle um, Rusty Nail. Let me throw this away. I'm going to try to not get patina all over my dining area because yeah. actually, we actually care about stuff in here. So this is going to be a challenge for me. Okay, so I'm just going to take, and I this applies just like a paint. I'm just going to use one of my chip brushes, and I want to, I'm going to do two coats of this because, you know, when you're painting on metal, it's not the best coverage. See how I don't get full coverage on my first coat? Um, I'm going to do two coats of this so that I get nice full coverage. And I don't care if I've got a little bit of texture, but I want to try to keep it kind of even. I'm not going super messy on these. 
Oh, see, there you go. I lost a brush here. I just pick it up and I'm going to just You're just going to brush it on my, the table? Yeah, my dining room table. With, no big deal. This is our fine linens, <laughs> aka it's a drop cloth. It's our holiday. Yeah, our, our, it's our holiday drop cloth, though. It's our holiday garb. <laughs> We're fancy like that. So I'm just going over and I'm going to, I think that means what I ended up doing on some of the other ones is I kind of used a cross hatching pattern. So I'm doing my first coat in vertical brush strokes, but then when I come back on my second coat, I'm going to do horizontal. And that's going to give me this really cool cross hatching texture. I like texture for patina paint because it's going to pick up all that texture when I put the sprays and stuff on it. We're going to get there towards the end of this. I'll show, I'm going to go through all the steps because I have. <laughs> now Ronnie said she's got lots of those fancy cards. Hey cloths. Ronnie, Ronnie, I got, a, I got your card in the mail. I meant to message you today and I haven't been able to. It just arrived today. You guys, Ronnie sent me the sweetest card in the mail. Me and my kids. Thank you for that, Ronnie. That was so special. It was super cute too. I'm going to send you a message when I get off. I'll send you a message. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wrong message. Okay, so I'm just going through all the sides and I'm just going to add my Prime Start. Now, I would, I'm going to go ahead and want two coats of my Prime Start on this just so I get that full coverage. All right, sorry, Linda. She wants to know why I'm so quiet tonight. Um, You know what it is, you guys? Okay, all my kids are in summer camp this week. Sean and I are exhausted because we're basically just Uber drivers. We have to drive two of them like 40 minutes away into sacramento for summer camp uh, another one is in the opposite direction for summer school he's going to summer camp next week we're and and so sean and i are so thrown off of our game i'm sure so they're coming home exhausted and half the people in my house are asleep right now and i'm inside the house <laughs> oh, wait, sean, oh, oh. sean included <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just about done with this one. <laughs> Dana, Uber parents. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah. That, seriously, that's a thing, right? I like that name. I'm, I'm going to name it that. My kids owe me $500 on their Uber bill. Okay, so I'm going to set this one aside and let it dry. Um, it'll probably, it might get to the next stage while we're on tonight, but that's okay because I have other ones painted in the next stages already. I'm way ahead of you guys. Okay. So we'll let that one dry. I'm going to go ahead and put this lid on my Prime Start, set that brush aside. And what I have here is I have my next one that is done in two shade or two coats of Prime Start already. It's already nice and dry. Um, you can see it's coated my primes or coated my metal. I don't have any metal exposed. It's got really good coverage on it, and I feel like I can add my patina paint on top of this now. So the one that I want to use, I told you guys, is patina paint in copper. Patina paint comes in three different colors, okay? Comes in iron, copper, and bronze. And you can kind of think in your head, what does iron look like when it weathers? Iron turns to rust when it weathers. If you leave an old wheelbarrow outside in the weather, it's gonna rust, it has iron in it. So iron, you know, is gonna turn to rust colors. Copper, you can think about the Statue of Liberty is made of copper. It's gonna turn to those blue colors, the really pretty blues and greens that are in copper. Um, and then bronze, uh, bronze either turns to like shades of black, really, really rich brownish black, or you can get blues in it too. Um, but I want those greens of copper. So I haven't used my patina paint in a little while. It does form a little skin over the top. And so I just took that piece off. I had you wash that little spoon earlier. Can you Whoa. grab that for me? Huh? Yeah, snap that. <laughs> Where is it? That silicone one that I gave you? Is it on the counter? No. Well, that was a great question. And just grab me any spoon. We're in my kitchen, right? We'll just use a kitchen spoon. <laughs> you know, we go. Give me one of the kids' spoons. One of these? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the baby ones. Okay. Yeah. You're going to have one of those? Yeah. yeah. I still have baby spoons in my house. I was kind of curious. Did you want to see what steel looks like when it ages? <laughs> <laughs> your abs. <laughs> abs of steel. Okay. You want to stir your patina paint really well. How patina paint works is it actually has metal particles, particles of metal inside the paint, and they can tend to settle. Okay, so no matter what color of patina you're using, you wanna make sure you stir it really well. Pick up those particles all off the bottom of your patina and get it nice and well mixed. So that is my copper, okay? Um, did it 
go in the dishwasher? No. <laughs> Sean's looking up. It's good. Okay, so now that I've got my two coats of prime start on this, I can start right away just atta or applying my copper patina paint. Now, this is a really rich metallic, you guys. You can use the um, patina paints without using the sprays with them. So if you just wanted this rich, let me show you guys just on my brush, this really rich metallic, you can use this without applying the sprays. And I've done that. It's really pretty on a piece. It, they actually get really great coverage, too, for metallics. So don't hesitate to use, um, actually, you know what, let me say this, use the copper and the bronze. You don't want to use the iron without the spray. It's just a really dull gray color and it does not get good coverage. So that would be one I would say, don't use that, don't use the iron without the spray. It's not a metallic, it's a very flat gray. But the copper and the bronze are rich metallics that you can use on their own. If you're looking to do a copper or a bronze colored piece, you can use them without the spray and just get those metallic colors. Do you use throwaway brushes or brushes that can be washed? So I'm using throwaway brushes on this one just because I just want a little bit of texture with it. But if you want to get a smooth coat with them, use your good brushes. That would be all the same rules that apply to doing like a regular furniture piece with this. You can use this on furniture, even though I'm using this on just a decorative small item right here. You can put these on furniture. If I was doing a coat on furniture and I wanted a smooth finish on it, I would use my good Dixie Bell brushes. Another thing that's really pretty though, is to take your brush when you're applying the metallics and go in like a cross hatching pattern and you get this really pretty brushed metal look because metallics show every brush stroke and you can either fight that or you can use it to your advantage and create really cool looks that show every brush stroke. They catch the light because they've got those metallic particles in it I like to just take advantage of it. I don't fight that. Shauna says you don't know how happy she is when she opens up her phone and it's got a notification that you're live. Oh, uh, thank you, Shauna. You know, um, a few people have said something that uh, Facebook notifications for lives are not very reliable right now. And what was happening, if Dixie Bell puts up a live or notifications on their page, you get notified for every live that they're doing on their page. So I just tell people if you've got certain favorites that you want to be at their lives, just set a notification on your phone for the time that they're on. The brand ambassador team for Dixie Bell, um, there's, there's 12 of us now, and um, we all have set times that we go live. So you can program those times. They really don't change. All right. So I've got my coat of copper on. Let me show you guys up close what, okay. the, what it looks like. Can you see all those brush strokes in there? I like that. It's going to help me when I do my patina finish to have all those brush strokes. Those are all going to turn different kind of colors and I'll get really pretty contrast. Fine lines and wrinkles? Yes. Yeah, don't fight them, guys. You know, uh, who watched the Friends reunion? Who noticed which of the friends have had their uh, eyes done? Like, just, just let it go natural. I'm telling you. Not right. Um, okay, so this is my one, um, my star that already has my first coat of copper all dry. So I let my first coat of copper dry. This next coat is where you're going to see the magic happen, okay? So let me set this guy to the side. And now that I've, I've got one coat of copper on here, it's your second coat that you're going to add your spray to, okay? So just to stop you for a second because it's what I do. Am I bothering you? You really are. <laughs> Talk too much. Um, if you want to leave it like that, can you leave it like yes, that? Yes, yes. That's what I mean. If you want to keep this metallic uh, copper color, you could apply this smoothly without not using the chip brush. Use one of your nice brushes and apply it just like a paint. And you can seal this and this can be a paint finish. Okay, that would be totally okay. I've done looks like that before. If you want to see me, you're welcome to message me and I can share that with you. It's really, really pretty. It's just a... It's just a really rich copper metallic, and you can leave it like this if you don't want to get the verdigris effect that I'm going to change it to. I also do want to say from a safety standpoint, you with a star, that's not really good. That's like me on the receiving end of a boomerang. Yeah, like a throwing star. Yeah. If Sean makes me mad, I'm going to... Yeah. Okay, um, a couple words of caution I want to say. If you're doing patina paint, if you're using this in a class setting or even in your house like I am right now, Look around you first and make sure that you don't have any metal around you, okay? And the reason that I know that is because I taught a class a couple times actually where we were in like a hotel and their chairs that the class was taught in were made of metal. And when you spray the sprays, they're corrosive. 
No cleaning deposit back from the hotel on that one. Whoopsie. It, it started corroding their metal chairs. So make sure you don't have any other metal around you because these are corrosive. It's like, it's like if you have, you know, this, I'm going to go to the Statue of Liberty again. Why does she look the way she does? She's in saltwater air. So if you have these corrosive materials next to copper, next to metal, it corrodes it. And that's what it's supposed to do. It's doing its job. So let's talk about the sprays because I'm going to put these on with the next step that we're about to do. The sprays come in blue and in green. And the difference between the two is what colors do you want to come out in your, in your patina, okay? So I'm probably going to use, I think I'm going to go with the blue because I tend to like the blues a little bit better. I might use a little bit of both and just mix it up. Um, you can, you can mix them up. You can use one or the other and they come in containers like this and then you get your spray nozzle separately, okay? Um, and the reason for that is you wanna actually save this little cap that comes on the container of your patina. Um, and you can take it right off and you just save this because when you're done, you're gonna to wanna to flush out your spray nozzle, okay? This has, these have metal springs and stuff in them. Guess what it does? It's gonna corrode. So if you leave this sitting in here with the patina spray in the nozzle, it's going to corrode. The next time you come back to use it, this thing's not going to work at all. So when you're done, you take your nozzle back off, flush this out with water. It's nice and clean. You can use it again, and then you're going to store it with this black lid on top of it. So save this. You want this guy. But I'm going to go ahead and add my nozzles. The other thing you can do is you can, if you want to um, get a fine, a fine mist with your patina sprays, is you can put them in your inside your mister bottle. Again, when you're done, flush it out. But that gives you a totally different look. You can apply the sprays with a sponge. If you wanna dab it on with a sponge, you can dab it on with a, a, a brush, you can use a rag to put it on. So even though it comes in a spray bottle, doesn't mean that's the only way you can apply it. So I'm gonna put the nozzles on my blue and on my green. Make sure they're nice and tight. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and start applying my next coat. This is my second coat of the copper, okay? And the second coat, you wanna apply your sprays while your second coat is wet. So I'm gonna get this all coated. I've got pretty good coverage, so I'm not really worried about that. I just wanna get some wet paint on all of it. And I'm going for that little bit of texture. So this is kind of nice that I don't have to really worry about are my brush strokes super smooth on this. I just want that little bit of cross hatching I told you about. I did vertical last time. I'm going horizontal this time. Oh, honorable mention. But he said this is her favorite. Copper is her fave. But I love how she, it was like walking into a party. She comes on and she just starts name dropping yeah. everybody. <laughs> how you doing? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I really like appreciate the people that are on with us every week because this makes me nervous to come on and paint live on camera. And so having that interaction really, really helps us to relax a little bit. It never feels normal and natural and you're okay doing, doing live videos. It's always stressful. So Betty, I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. You guys save your Thursdays and come on and hang out with us. Now, if you're going to rinse that bottle. Where do you rinse it? It is corrosive. So if you have metal in your pipes and things, you don't want that going down your sink, right? So I have a um, hose bib that's over a gravel pit that's outside. Take it outside, flush it even in a bucket. Fill Take it to the parking lot? Yeah. We're taking this outside? Uh, you can fill a bucket up with water and just sit there and uh, dip the end of your spray nozzle in the bottle and, and sit there and spray it till the water runs clean. You can do it that way. You don't have to do it inside in your sink. All right, you guys, I have a coat of wet paint, wet copper all around this. I'm going to go ahead and this is where I'm going to add my sprays. Oh, a little flashback for you. I'm going to move my dining chair so I can spray it. Maybe you want our first Dixie Bell paint from you when you first started. Betty did. Yeah. I, I remember that. We used to do uh, giveaways on every live. I remember that, Betty, because I was so nervous I said your name wrong. Um, okay, so I'm starting with the green spray and I'm just gonna, I'm holding it kind of at a distance and I've got it on kind of a mist of a spray. You can turn the little nozzle uh, depending on if you want a mist or a stream out of it and I'm getting kind of a mist. So it's gonna leave these like little droplets. Okay. Just out of fear. 
Yeah, I, 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 do, I do like my dining chairs. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of blue on it, just for fun, just to get a little bit of variation. You don't have to use both. You can use just one or the other. It's really personal preference. Betty says you were awesome then, and you still are. Oh, thanks, Betty. Thanks for sticking around all these years. That's been <laughs> a while ago. I would have understood if you would have... Uh... Vacated. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm out. laughs> okay, so let me show you guys this. It's kind of starting to drip, so I'm going to keep it over my drop cloth that's on my table. It's already changing color. Now, is there an alternative uh, to the spray? To this... Um, you want the actual chemicals in here. Do you just mean to applying it with the spray? Because that's where I mean that you can use like a sponge or a um, a brush to apply it. You don't have to spray it. Is that what you mean? Or do you I'm just mean something just... else that you can use to coat it? You could also just leave this outside for a few years and eventually it's going to change colors, right? No? <laughs> okay. Well, that's my next idea. Um, there are different corrosive materials if you wanted to try to manufacture your own. I don't recommend that, but you can. Nothing like a you, science experiment? It is. It's a science experiment. If you wanted to get scientific about what causes corrosion in different types of metals, you know, you definitely can try it. I think this is the easier way. Okay, so let's watch this, you guys, because this is the best part of <laughs> Georgia, give me, doing this inside is giving her anxiety. It's giving me totally anxiety. Agree. It's freaking me out a little bit, but I'm telling you, 110 degrees, and I this has a rubber backing on my drop cloth, so I'm keeping it over the table, you guys. Can you guys see the colors that are already starting to change in oh, here? Yeah. Can yeah. you see that? Okay, it's going to take overnight for this to fully react, but you can already see the colors of the green and the blue that I'm getting in there. It's got some little splotches from my spray going on. Here I've got a couple little drips that are gonna be really cool. Okay, on this tip, I've got a little bit more of my regular paint that's still showing through. I like those little bits of paint when they're still showing through. Hey, FBJ, sorry, I saw you chime in earlier. You can even come back and you can kind of put in some of your regular paint. Well, Brenda, that's not true. We're not the best couple to watch on video because I have a face for radio. So that's why I'm behind the camera. <laughs> So you can come in and you can kind of put if you, you know, if you want some of your regular metal color to th show through, you can do all kinds of cool techniques. You can, um, you can come back and brush your sprays into the paint so you get more even coverage. I'm just going to kind of see what this does. And then I'm just going to let this sit and we'll go ahead and do another one. Could you do something like this on wood? Yes, absolutely. So the only difference, the only difference would be you can make your wood look like metal. I'm making my metal look like metal, but the only difference would be if you're doing wood, you don't have to use the prime start. Okay, you can skip that step. I had to use that because I'm painting on metal, but if you're painting on wood, you can skip that step. So I'm going to leave this. Let's see, how can I lean this up so you guys can kind of watch it while I'm working? Would you kill me if I panned over here? Oh, oh yeah, uh, shut our pantry door. Huh? Yeah. Sean's gonna show you, I have patina paint in my kitchen. So I'm gonna leave this sitting up because it's literally gonna change. You can sit here if you wanted to and just watch the patina happen. It is the coolest process and it makes you feel like an artist even if you're doing nothing. And then we can go here. And this is the one that I just did one coat of my copper on. I think it's dry enough that I can come behind and we'll put a coat on here. Are you okay if I take one for a ride real quick? You want to go on a field trip? Yeah. Okay, really quick, we're going to come over okay. into my kitchen area. Are you going to take us? Is it clean enough over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, let me move this. Down. IG, I'll be right back. Okay, so this is my actual kitchen. I'm going to come up here on my kid's stool. And I'm going to show you this because this is my kitchen range hood. This is, I'm in, over my own stove. It's pretty, it's pretty clean. I don't know. What do you think, guys? Think? We can't see that for a reason. <laughs> okay. When you control the camera, you control the view. <laughs> this I painted myself. I ordered this as a wood blank off of Etsy, okay? And I painted this entirely myself. This is Dixie Belle paint, and what did I use? I, this is buttercream. Um, and it matched my cabinet color, which is kind of an ivory color. And then this is bronze patina paint with blue spray. I applied this spray with a mister bottle. Okay, and I um, and it's coated in Gator Hide. So I sprayed it in Gator Hide once I was done. 
So if can you come in here and see you can see some of the blues you know, I feel that are like in there's here. There's a lot of you. Can you see these colors that are in here? That's what the patina does. And these are blues and greens. I don't know if you can see the shades on camera. Um, but this is the kind of black background that the bronze turns into. And then you get those really pretty blues and greens in there. And I just did a little bit just along the veining here. So it's not too much. It doesn't look too crusty. But that is my range hood done in patina paint. All right, if we come back to our star, you can see it's starting to turn. Can you see the blues that are coming out in it? It's really pretty. Let's do another one. This is our one that only has one coat on it. So I'm just gonna come back and I'm gonna add my second coat now, just like I did to the other one. This is a fun class to teach too. If you guys have a retail shop, patina is a really fun class to teach because it makes everybody feel really, like you come out of it with something so cool that looks like a faux finish only the paint is doing all the work for you. You feel like an artist without having to actually be one. You can go show Instagram the range because I know okay. they missed out on it. Yes, I got a yeah, few you, comments. You guys already saw this step right here. So Sean's going to take Instagram over to the range hood. I'm just going to put the second coat of copper on. You guys already saw this. So here's what it looks like as far as being on wood. That, yes, my range hood is wood. That started out as just plain wood. And we'll take you in as far as the coloring. If it comes up on camera. Backed up against the, the but cream. That's a real a real application of patina paint on wood and, and something bigger than just this home decor item that I'm using it on here. All right, okay. so same thing. I've got, all, I've got my second coat on. While my second coat of patina paint is wet, that's when I want to apply the spray. I've got a really cool texture and I'm just going to take my sprays just like I did the first time. Um, here's the other thing. You may want to wear gloves for this. I'm not wearing gloves, but if you have any skin sensitivity, obviously I'm spraying this right now. It's getting on my skin. No gloves? Uh, I should be wearing gloves. I should be wearing gloves, especially since I'm holding these while I'm spraying it. If it was down on the table, but it's actually contacting my arm and stuff. I don't have, I, I don't have a lot of skin sensitivities, thankfully. Um, but yeah, put gloves on if you're going to be holding something like this. You can even wear a mask if you're doing this indoors. It smells like vinegar. That's what the smell smells like. It tastes salty if you get it in your mouth. Well, I also want to draw attention I mean, to like how... in your mouth, but I mean, if, if it goes in the air and you breathe it, it tastes salty. Obviously what you're doing, but just in a matter of a few minutes, look at the oxidation that or the, the transfer yeah. of color that's happened. You can already see the blue starting to come out in it. Okay, and then I'm going to... I just did the green spray. Now I'm going to repeat with the blue. Because my first one is a mix of blue and green. And so just my my verdigris on this is going to be kind of a tealy color. Throw all these big words on me. Verdigris. Tealy? <laughs> yeah, tealy. <laughs> Let me get the Webster out. <laughs> so it's already starting to change colors. Okay, so one thing you can do with patina paint, if you get it to, a, I don't want to stop this, but if you get it to a spot that you kind of like how it looks and you want to stop the chemical reaction, because this is going to keep going probably until tomorrow morning, I won't see my full results. But if you want to stop it at any point along the way, you get to be the boss of patina paint. And how you do that is if you think about the chemistry of it, you need to neutralize the chemical reaction that's going on in the paint right now. You do that with water. You can neutralize patina paint with water. So if you want to stop it along the way, like I love the look, I like what it's doing right now. I want to stop it, put water on it and then dab it off. So it's not dripping. Um, and that will kind of, it will neutralize your reaction and stop it from going any further in the process. So that's how you get to be the boss of patina paint. Only if you're a control freak. Yeah, I mean, there's cool there's cool looks you can get by kind of freezing it in its process too. So don't feel like you you have to let it go all the way either. You can you can play with freezing it in the process and see what the looks look like. And I mean, there's a ton of different that you can. It's like it, it's like being Mr. Wizard. There's a ton of different things you can do with it. Do you remember the coloring by chance that you used on the hood? Yes, that is bronze patina paint with um, blue spray bronze and blue. So there's three different uh, paint colors and then two different spray colors and you can mix and match them. The only combination that I do not recommend is doing the iron with blue. 
okay? Because there's really only one color of rust you get, it's orange. And that happens on iron with green. So if you're doing the iron patina paint, get the green spray. Don't, the, the blue just, it, it just looks like, it just comes out looking gray. It doesn't look like you did anything. And so people are usually disappointed by that one because you want the magic to happen. That's the fun of patina paint. Um, so iron with green is the only one that you're kind of, you know, stuck on. Otherwise you can, you could mix and match, do one or the other, both. Um, but my range hood is um, uh, iron with, with, or I'm sorry, bronze with blue. And there is a blog post on my website at brushbybrandy.com that goes through the process. It will walk you through all the steps, okay? It's, uh, it's, a, it's a post about my entire kitchen, but it walks through, um, in particular, my range hood. Does it walk through making my dinner? Um, no, that, no? that doesn't happen in my kitchen, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that happens in a fast food kitchen. I know, I make my dinner. <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh, all right, so this guy, you guys, this is the one we first started on. I'm just going back and I'm applying while we're waiting for these to change. And we'll take a look at them in just a minute. I'll show you what's happening with their, our patina paint because it's, it's changing right before our eyes. But I'm just applying my second coat of Prime Star on this one. All right, let's talk a little bit about sealing patina paint because that can get a little bit tricky. So there's a couple options. I'm gonna let this dry. This is my second coat of Prime Start on this star here. I'm just gonna set that one down. These are still doing their thing, turning kind of blue, kind of green. Um, I like the change that's going on. I'm just gonna keep letting it ride. How about uh, doing this on some terracotta? Yes, you absolutely can put it on terracotta pots and make them look uh, metal. So I had a couple of... Um, uh, <laughs> Shoot, we just... Uh, yeah, I just sold them actually, what, yesterday? Um, resin pots out front of my house, and they were solid color resin, which is like a plastic, and I turned them into bronze. They look like bronze pots. They were really pretty. Um, I have a video for that on my YouTube channel. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you can do this on really any material that you can think of. Um, wood. Uh, you know, here I'm doing metal. You can do it on furniture. You can do it on plastic. Like I said, my resin pot. Because it's not a reaction with the material. Yeah, no, it has nothing to do with what your material underneath is. The only thing that changes with your material underneath is if you're doing metal, add prime start to the process. If you're not doing metal, you can skip this step completely. Just go right into adding your paint. Got it, class. That's the only thing that changes with what your base is. So let's talk about these, okay? These are my... Um, stars that I did a couple years ago. I never sealed these because it's wall decor. So nobody's going to be touching it. I don't need to wipe them down regularly or anything like that. So I never sealed them, but I'm going to seal them with you guys tonight. Let me show you guys what the options for sealing patina paint are. Um, in the patina line, there is patina guard. Okay. This is great protection for your patina, but it's nasty stuff. It smells really bad. It's oil based. Uh, so it doesn't clean that very well. Um, you want to use this in a well-ventilated area. It goes on thicker than most of our clear coats um, that you're used to. But this is definitely an option if you want to seal your patina and protect that. It's a great protection. It's just stinky. Um, I'm going to use Gator Hide tonight. Okay. I don't think I've ever sealed patina paint and not had it change the look at least a little bit. So if you love your patina... If you love it and you're not sure of, that you want to change it a little bit, do a little test spot in a corner so that you know what it's going to look like sealed because sealing it does change the look. It will deepen the colors a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to open my Gator Hide. You can give me another baby spoon because I need to stir this. And we're, we're not going to be able to have babies at our house after this. Oh, no. <laughs> my sister just had my niece over. She's only a year old. And she was glad I kept all my baby stuff. Yeah, we loved, she loved hanging out with me. Okay, can you guys see the colors that are going on in this right here? It's really pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're going to apply Gator Hide. So I'm going to stir my Gator Hide really well. You always want to stir Gator Hide. Sorry, I'm cutting your face out of this so that we I can see I, I know, you usually do that. They're both kind of the same colors here. I'm going to let it go. But again, if it gets to a spot that you really like the look in it, use water, spray it with water. That will neutralize the reaction. It might not stay exactly the same, but it's at least going to stop it from going further. 
when this dries a little bit, some of this patina is gonna look like a white powder. Um, my rest doesn't have any on there. And all you do, this is for the question earlier about the white powder, yes. so go ahead. Yeah, all you do when it dries is you want to come back with a damp rag and you're just going to wipe the white powder away. It's a, it's efflorescence, you guys. It's, um, it's the salty reaction in the, in the patina turns to a white efflorescence and it's like a powder and you can just wipe it away. You just get a damp rag and you can wipe it off. You know, you drop these words and I just want to like fact check it. I, I want to have something no, because you know what? next to me. Here's how I'm going to tell you this. And I'm going to sound like a super nerd. I got into the rabbit hole at one point with patina and I read all this oh, stuff this. on corrosive metals. That's what I did. I wanted to learn like, how can I neutralize the reaction? How, what is, what is the, what is going on with it so that I can control it? I needed to understand it. And, um, and so I went into the rabbit hole of science articles about corrosive metal. And I swear at the end, I thought you figured out time travel. Yeah, I was super excited because I have a piece in my house and the only way I was able to do it was by learning to control the patina. That's um, why we have a flux capacitor in the car right now, <laughs> I thought. So I'm going to go ahead and seal this. I'm going to seal all these. It's going to change the colors in this a little bit. So I'm going to use my Gator Hide sponge and I just got it damp with a little bit of water on it from my Mr. Bottle. So I stirred my Gator Hide really well and I'm going to dip my sponge in here. Let me show you what I'm talking about doing a test spot. So just do a test spot. Make sure it, can, it darkened that corner a little bit. Make sure you like that because once you seal it, it's going to change all of it to those little bit deeper colors. But it also gives them more contrast. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe this on. Now this is wall decor, so I wouldn't really feel like I had to seal it if I didn't want to. Um, if it's something that you're going to be using regularly, I would say seal your patina because uh, this is rust. It really made rust on it. So if you're touching this, it will give you like rusty powder on your hands. And if that's on your furniture, it, you may not want that. You probably don't want that. So I always seal it if it's going to be something that I'm going to use functionally. These were just decorative, so I didn't worry about it. So I'm just wiping on a coat of gator hide and I'll show you this side by side, sealed and unsealed. Okay, but do a test spot. Sealing your patina paint is 100% going to change the look of it. Okay, can you see the lighter tones that are in here? If I was in love with this and this was already perfect, I wouldn't have to seal this, but just be aware, it's gonna change my colors to seal them. Hey Aaron. Um, so a couple of questions for you, um, and I don't necessarily know if one you could speak on. If it's a metal fireplace surround, mm -hmm. because of the heat, yes. would you try this? Heat resistance. Uh, so so here's the deal. A few things I would consider. How often do you use your fireplace? Um, and truly how much heat. I mean, the different yes. types of inserts or fireplaces, it's kind of tough to gauge. And then I'm going to say this is actually, um, it actually turns to real rust. So does rust get exposed to the elements all the time? Compare it to your rusty wheelbarrow. Is it outside next to your fire pit? It's you know? actually at my bedside. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to, to each their own. But think about that's the same stuff that's going to happen if you expose it to heat. So I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Honestly, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But just, just be aware you just created real, actual, natural rust. You could change some of the uh, appearance of it with heat. And with the outside, the... Um... These, are not, these are not heat resistant products at all. Even the Gator Hide is not. So if it gets extreme heat, like, I mean, I've seen open fireplaces where- Yeah, I mean, are we talking a 1970 goes... fireplace that's got- com... Yeah, yeah it, where it it's... goes up the brick and it makes the brick all dark in the front. If that's going on at your house, it's gonna, I wouldn't put flammable stuff. So consider all this stuff. Grandma's <laughs> All right, so I'm sealing all of these. But, but here's, so here's my vision, you guys. Can you see the blue? And then I've got the orange of the rest. So I, I wanna hang these together. And I'll have the contrast of the copper and the iron together with the blue and the orange, I think will be really pretty. With the pots outside, what did you seal them with? Um, I sealed those in Gator Hide. I okay. sprayed those in, well, 
by I, I mean you. Yeah, see, there's a, there's a lot of I in this. <laughs> Sprayed those in Gator Hide. And, and I, I just sold them, but they were out there for, what, a year, oh, year and plus. a half? Oh, plus, yeah. And they looked fine. They looked In the exposed I, area of outside, not yeah, like in oh, a covered... Yeah, full, full sun. Full, full on, sun, not, not covered full patio. And they looked like I had just done them. I didn't even... I didn't even clean them up or anything when I sold them because it's weathered bronze. So it actually like, it just weathered. Weathered a little more. Yeah, it just weathered. It was. Pretty... But you couldn't tell. Yeah. Um, so I, I just, I, I literally just sold them because we want to do something different with our entry, but. Um, like nothing. <laughs> if I got to do it. It just looked cluttery to me. So I just got rid of them. I'm not a like knickknacky person. Now, what if you are applying this to something that has a smooth finish? Your metal has a glossed finish. How would you? Okay, so I didn't put slick stick or anything on this because these are wall decor items. I, I mean, it's going to hang on the wall. Well, yeah, again, you have to take in use. consideration so where consider you're using. consider what your use is going to be with it. But if you're painting the same things, glass, plastic, laminate, PVC, all the things that would normally call for slick stick, would call for slick stick with patina paint too. So if you're doing those and you want to give them a patina look, put your slick stick Just underneath Just on, first. it wouldn't hurt to do it. If you, it's the same thing. If you would use if you would use slick stick for regular paint, you would use slick stick for patina paint too. So these I didn't use it on because they're not going to be heavily used. Because these are ninja stars, you're going to throw it. Yeah, I'm going to throw them. Like, when I'm taking my uh, my martial arts class. I have to show this one, and I don't know if it's going to show, but this has really pretty texture in. Like, can you see these dark spots? And it's got the brighter orange, and I can see the texture in it. I don't know. That's what patina paint does. It looks like you did some exotic finish on it, but it really is just the paint does it all for you. How am I on time? We don't have a clock in my dining area. Uh, it's... Okay. <clears throat> So I would say I have one more star left to do, and I'm probably not going to be able to finish that one. But look at, so I added some, some of my copper over the top of my patina just so I have a little bit of metal kind of showing through. But look at some of these areas right here. This one's pretty cool where I've got the metal showing through. There you go. Yeah. So it gets all these pretty colors in it. Now I did this, I added this back in, so I'll have some of these spots that have just the metal color. Kind of like it. Looks kind of tiger stripey. Now what causes the mister bottle to not necessarily give you a fine mist that you were using, but if it comes out in droplets? Uh, this one here or this one? I'm guessing, yeah. Okay, if you have to turn this little nozzle right here, but it's just like any spray bottle, you guys. It comes out heavier. We're all used to using fine misters like this where it comes out in like a puff of water. Uh, if you want, you can put your patina or your patina spray in your mister bottle and you can spray it from here and get that really fine mist from it. But these, it, it's a regular spray nozzle, just like you would use for your hair or I don't know, that you get at the hardware store. That's what these are. It doesn't come out as fine. It creates droplets and can come out a little heavier than you want. So um, I really like that you went straight from your hair to a hardware store. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all the same thing to me now you're making a well, sense you know probably because if i was going to go look for stuff to do my hair with i would go to the heart that's where i go yeah so i just added in a little bit more it's turning kind of more green i've got some more green spots over here okay if you're if i let this sit overnight and i come back and i hate the look of it I'm like oh my god i don't like this this one looks way better that i didn't add the extra copper to or if you want to make a new one. That was just water, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have tile floors, by the way. So if I did this and I end up liking this way better, I can just come back and I would just reapply my patina paint all over. Because that's re never happened. And spray it and you just start over again. And you can keep doing layers. Or let's say I like all of the sides of this star except for this one I hate. I can just do this one over again, respray it. So you can apply this over itself until you get the look that you like out of it too. So don't feel like you can't play around with it. You can get little items like these, like these stars, or I brought this out too. <laughs> said you just look like an angry teenager. 
Because I got water all over Forget this. Yeah, like I just touch my... Clear the table. I'm done. Stupid patina paint. Sometimes you might feel like that. I'm not eating my vegetables. This is another example. I got this at my local dollar store. Who else has the dollar store where everything's not really a dollar? It's actually more than a dollar. Like then they, you'd have to change the name to like three dollar store. I and then feel you'd like have... they lied to me. But this was a dollar ninety nine, and this would be a perfect candidate if you want to just play around and see what looks you can get with patina paint. I could turn this into a rusty pot, or you know, do the blues and greens if I don't like this beautiful pink color. Or you could water the garden with it. Who wouldn't like that? garden yeah when did we true. get one of those what you know they have vegetables at the grocery store right <laughs> in okay. bags so i'm going to show you guys this guy here it's getting some spots see how this is more green and this is more blue because i use blue and green spray on this one so you get to kind of determine what colors you want in your patina all right that's really pretty so if you don't like it, just go back, reapply the paint, respray it again, and, and let, the, let the chemical process happen and then see what you think about it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these up. I will get pictures of these posted on my page so you guys will see what the final result in them is. I'm not sure if I'll seal them. I'll wait and see if I like the look. I don't have to seal these. So if I like the look unsealed, I can leave these unsealed. That's the nice part about doing this wall decor. But this, you guys can, can rewind back to the beginning. From what we started with these to this is where it's turned just in the 40 minutes that I've been on camera. I don't know. I don't know. I added these tiger stripes. I don't know if I like them. If I don't, guess what? I'll just paint over it, respray it, and it'll be fine. So can we circle back just super quick? If it's metal, what are you going to put if on there? If it's metal, prime start. Start with Prime Start. This Go in there creates, for you, Mary. This creates a barrier so that your corrosion does not carry through to the metal underneath. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys something, though. These here, I did these a couple years ago. They have no Prime Start on them because I didn't care. It's not a high-value item. Um, so that's something to consider, too. <laughs> the, the risk I was taking is in 10 years, could this, could this underneath metal start corroding? Yeah, but I'd probably be okay with it. So that's something you can consider too. Is if, is if it's if you don't really care, then huh? <laughs> but but what you're doing is you're creating a barrier so that it doesn't start corroding the metal underneath. If you're you know if it's your one dollar watering can, do I really care if this starts corroding in ten years? Uh, I probably I'd probably be okay with it. <laughs> Sorry, I did that and I could hear myself echoing. The jokes are on this side of the camera, please. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You Thank wanna, you. You want to trade? I no, I appreciate this. <laughs> okay, so if you're painting on metal, prime start. If you care about your metal, prime start. If it's fiberglass, plastic, whatever. Slick stick. If you would use slick stick under the regular paint, you would use slick stick under patina paint. It's the same thing. Um, it's just a different it's just a paint. It's a paint, you guys. Alright, so was that a cool process? So tonight we used prime start, okay, on our metal. We used copper patina paint. We used green and blue patina spray, which gave us the different colors of reaction with the copper. And then I sealed them in gator hide. That was our process that we did tonight. Everything I used here today is available at the link above that's in the post. Um, that's <laughs> that will take you directly to Dixie Bell. And I earn a percentage um, of sales from there, so I always appreciate that. But you can also use that to find a retailer in your area. If you want to go in and talk to a retailer, see the products in person, you can use the find a retailer function there too. I'm going to throw two quick ones at you. Yes. Plastic wicker. How would you go at it? Uh, I would use probably use slick stick on that. Pressed metal. Um, metal prime start. Boom. Done. Yeah. Um, well, let me clarify one thing. If you use slick stick because it's metal, slick stick does not create a barrier like Prime Start does. So consider that too, that if you would probably still want Prime Start, even if you're using slick stick for grip, Prime Start is creating a barrier for the corrosion. It's two different functions. So don't think one replaces the other. I don't know if that helped or just made people more confused. No. Okay. You're okay. Okay. So you guys, I'm going to pop off. If you guys don't already, please go follow me on YouTube. I have a video that comes out tomorrow on my YouTube channel. That's a really pretty blended finish using 
um, the Boho Soul Transfer, a little bit of um, silk screen stencils. It's really pretty, but I have a new video that comes out on my YouTube channel every Friday with a full tutorial, and that comes out tomorrow. So go check that out. Otherwise, I will be live here with you guys next Thursday, but you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for hanging out.